sure you think your way through it a little bit. Hello, I'm Adam McNichol and welcome to Lethal's Last Word. There are some crucial matches ahead of us this weekend and the first game we're going to take a look at is the Cats playing the Swans at Simmons Stadium in Geelong. It's a battle for a top two position and a home final. And Lee Matthews, as I welcome you, both sides are coming off good wins. Adam, yeah, it's a big prize, isn't it? And they're both in good form. Geelong, their first half against West Coast last week was just unbelievably good. The Swans have been in good, good consistent form. But yeah, that top two finish, that is the ultimate starting point for your finals campaign. And really, the loser of this has just about blown that. Our key stat to look at here is their form against the other contenders. And, Lee, this is where Geelong really stand tall. Yeah, they are interesting, the, the Cats. They just, sometimes you think they're sort of in subconscious cruise mode, but when they have to produce, and that's a fair, st a fair stat, against the other eight teams, uh, top eight teams, eight wins, one loss. The Swans have been about, you know, good, but not outstanding against the top eight teams. So uh, at Skilled Stadium uh, against Geelong, it's going to be a really big game for the, uh, for the Swans. Let's go to our first key player for this clash, and it's for Geelong. It's their skipper, Joel Selwood, who until a month ago, across his 155-game career, had only kicked more than two goals once. But he's now booted bags of three or more in four of his last five weeks. Yeah, he seems to be playing more for Wonderful player, Joel Selwood. Wonderful centre-square player, and the number of times... He has just lifted Geelong when they're in a flat patch during a game. Um, yeah, he's kicked, uh, he's kicked 11 goals in the last four games, and he's had 37 score involvement. So the fact is he's doing a lot of work in the forward half of the field. And I think one of the reasons that uh, teams tend to try and spread the load on their midfielders, and just maybe he's been spending a little bit more time forward half this last month, before he maybe reverts to that traditional role as their absolute uh, linchpin of their centre square. And now, Lee, he's held in very high regard as a skipper, but where does he rank compared to all the other skippers in the comp? Oh, well, I think he's as good as any. I mean, how do you rank him? Luke Hodges uh, is fantastic. Trent Cotchin's been really good. I mean, there's just a lot of them throughout the competition, but uh, but Joel Selwood, I know, the number of times Geelong are in trouble and Selwood single-handedly rules them over the line, he's a wonderful leader. To the Swans' key player now, and it's their highly publicised recruit for this season, key forward Kurt Tippett. And he's certainly been a good focal point once he was. Allowed well, he to don the red and white Guernsey. Kicking almost four goals a game since he, uh, he came back uh, in round 13 after the suspension. The bottom one's the interesting one. He is the forward target a lot, 40% of the time. Kicking 24% of the Swans' goals, that's not so bad. But in the absence of Sam Reid and Adam Goods, he's been incredibly important. And, the one thing you do, that the numbers say they are going to him a lot, like the priority of him as their forward target means he's got to be kicking his three or four goals a game, otherwise the ball's going to come bouncing out a lot. He, he'll be opposed by Tom Lonigan this week, and Lonigan is as good as any of the big defenders on those big marking forwards. But uh, from the Swans' point of view, again, Adam Good's been injured, Sam Reid's been injured, so the fact that Tippett has been the reinforcement in the second half of the season, he's been terrific. But again, I think the number of times they're going to them, they are very dependent on, uh, on one player, more so than the Swans have been. Uh, in the previous year or two. Now, a key to the Swans game last year was they had a lot of different goal kickers. Mm. Lee, are they going to tip it too often? Well, I think that's probably a bit of an Achilles heel. I mean, when you're going to someone 40% uh, of the time when you go forward as a target, well, if he doesn't get his three or four goals, then, uh, then he's not living up to that uh, priority his teammates are giving to him. OK, Lee, time for your last word. Who's going uh, to win? Geelong at the Skilled Stadium. I don't know when the last time I've ever tipped against Geelong at Skilled Stadium. I saw them beat the Swans pretty easy down there at the, about this time last year. So, yeah, we'll stick with the Cats. Very good. So that's Lethal's last word on the big contest at Geelong between the Cats and the Swans. Saturday afternoon, under the roof at Etihad Stadium, the Kangaroos are taking on the Hawks. And, Lee, with North Melbourne winning three of their past four, Hawthorne won't want to take them lightly. Well, they're a dangerous team, the Kangaroos. As we see a 9-11 win-loss ratio. They're probably not going to play finals and we're struggling actually even to get to, you know, even on the win-loss ratio. But that win against Geelong three weeks ago showed what they can do. Uh, Hawthorne, we know how good they are and they just uh, had too much forward power for, uh, for Collingwood last week. So uh, it's got an interesting game, but certainly of the teams outside the eight, I would have thought the Kangaroos was much chance of anyone of beating one of the top, top group. 
Now, your key indicator, and it is a bit of a complex one here yeah. involving a multitude of players at the Hawks, but it all comes down to two of their players in Max Bailey and Grant Birchall and how they can release some of their teammates to play a different role. Talk us through yeah. this one, Lee, starting with Bailey. Well, they both were turned to the side last week. Now, when Bailey's in the team, David Hale can go and play as the third big forward, which means you've got Hale in there, you've got Roughhead in there. Franklin is really a big half-forward flanker. And I think Hawthorne are a much better team when, when Bailey's playing out in the ruck and Hale becomes another forward option. And when Birchall comes back to half-back, well, any thought of Sam Mitchell playing off half-back disappears when you've got Grant Birchall, who is such a good running half-back. So Mitchell, therefore, can go back into the centre of the ground and be the distributor from the middle of the ground rather than the back the back third when he's playing off, off half-back. So it's amazing that we talk about team balance. Team balance comes from having the right players to be able to use the other players in their, in their highest priority positions. And this leads into the key player for Hawthorne, which we've pinpointed as Brad Sewell. Now, his spot in the side has been queried, yeah. but, Lee, he was stellar last week well, against the Well, his first Pies. quarter last week, 13-odd disposals, a whole lot of clearances. I mean, his centre-bounce work was, uh, was fantastic. Again, he's often alternated off the uh, half-back line with, uh, with Mitchell. But last week, they were both in the centre square a lot for Hawthorne. And, I mean, Hawthorne have got a lot of players who can come in and out the centre square, but I still believe Mitchell and Sewell, they're the anchor points. Now, Lee, Brad Sewell has been very good in the last few weeks, but when it's warm and dry in the finals, can he get a game then? Yeah, absolutely. You need tough blokes who can win the ball in tight. Um, so uh, Mitchell's good at it, but Sewell's really good at it. And I think uh, come September, no doubt he'll be in the opening centre square for Hawthorne. Now, let's talk about the key matchup, and it's not a direct matchup, but a comparison mm. between two small forwards, Lindsay Thomas and Cyril Rioli. Take us through this one. Well, two of the elite small forwards. I mean, they don't, they, they, they both play in the forward third. Rioli, of course, goes in the centre square a little bit more. I mean, so what, Thomas is a better, it kicks more goals. Uh, Rioli gets a little bit more of the ball, but not a massive amount. That's the thing with Cyril Rioli. He does, his 14 touches are dynamic, but he doesn't, he doesn't get that much of the footy. So, I mean, in terms of uh, scoreboard influence on the game, Thomas, I mean, he's probably been the best small forward over the whole season in terms of that, you know, that, that almost that small full forward line. Whereas Rioli plays more like the running, uh, the running uh, half forward type who pushes up field. Certainly good with his defensive pressure, so uh, uh, I'm certain, uh, almost certainly Thomas will kick more goals, but Rioli's value, that's why I think we value him so high. There's not too many players that can get 14 or 15 possessions and almost be match winners, but Rioli can because his, his influence in the game with, with not a lot of involvements is, is pretty profound. Now, what's your last word, Lee? Who's going to win? Well, I'm sticking with to the Hawks. I mean, they, uh, they got this side together. They're looking in good shape. They're a real dangerous opponent at the moment, the Kangaroos, but I'll uh, stick to Hawthorne. Now, to all of your tips for Round 22, beginning with the Friday night clash at the MCG between Collingwood and West Coast. Uh, stick to Collingwood. I think uh, they're going to win, you know, 8 out of 10 against the Eagles at the MCG. Adelaide Crows, Melbourne, well, I think the Crows win sort of 10 out of 10. Melbourne have really uh, fallen right away. Um, Hawthorne, I think, they're still an 8 out of 10 uh, against the uh, Kangaroos. Geelong at skilled, I'd say a 6 out of 10. Fairly even, but I think Geelong will win. Essendon and Carlton, it's just we just got no idea where, what Essendon are capable of producing at the moment, so I'll stick with, uh, with Carlton on that 6 out of 10 type, uh, uh, type ranking. Uh, Dockers, uh, I still think they're a 9 out of 10. The Power have been really competitive, but I think the Dockers in Perth should win. Um, the Suns, oh, I rate them about a 7, seven win 7 out of every 10 against, uh, against St Kilda, even in Melbourne, the way the Suns are going, but that's a fairly even game probably. Richmond will allow the Giants even at home. I think uh, Richmond are going to win 9 or 10 out of any 10 of those games. And this is a bit of a 50-50 game for me, the Lions and the Bulldogs. Bulldogs have been in terrific form, but the fact, don't know whether they can take it to the Gabba, so I will, uh, I will stick with the home team, the Lions. Sounds good, Lee. Thanks, Thanks for Adam. joining us. And thank you for joining us on Lethal's Last Word. Enjoy all the football across the weekend. We'll see you soon.